All right, you might be getting the idea of how this works, right? When we talked about axial stuff, we talked about axial uh, stress and then axial strain, and then we talked about axial deformation. Now we did torsional stress, torsional strain, and now let's, let's get to that uh, torsional deformation. So we started with trying the idea that we were going to find the equivalent of the axial deformation equation uh, for torsion. And I think we're ready to do that. So we know the angle of twist is defined by the rate of deformation. That is the change in the angle of twist as we move along in the x direction uh, times the radius. So that gives us our shear stress. We know that in a linear elastic material, shear strain and shear stress are linked linearly by the shear modulus of elasticity. And we know the relationship between torque and stress as expressed in the torque formula. And those are going to be our three starting points uh, that we're going to use um, to find our deformation equation. And if we went back we could go back and show that we use these exact three or with the equivalent three equations to get to this guy up here. So let's do some uh, math. We'll start with equation one, uh, rearrange. So we're uh, moving that uh, essentially everything kept DP on the same time, moved everything else to the other side. And we're going to integrate that both sides of this equation here. Okay, so from zero to L, so we're going to integrate d phi uh, as well as dx. And we know that d phi over the length L, that's just going to get our angle of twist. That's going to be our full deformation. Uh, and this dx over our full length is just L. Right? So we're just measuring uh, changes in X and adding them up over the all of L, and so we get L. And we end up here. That gives us our angle of twist in terms of uh, shear stress. Now we're going to take this guy uh, and that guy and put them into the right sides of the equation. So we're going to replace this. And then we're going to replace this. And we get rid of, then, our shear uh, strain term. We get rid of our shear stress term. We get rid of our radius term, because those end up dividing out. And we end up with this guy right here. Now we can talk about this a little bit. This is the one that's equivalent to our actual, remember, delta equals PL over um, EA. Um, again, we have a more general form of it if we want to. If this means, you know, this assumes that uh, our internal torque stays the same throughout. It assumes that... Um, our material stays the same, uh, and then our cross-sectional area stays the same throughout. But we could find that angle of twist if, even if those things change. Um, but what it does is it predicts a total tor torsional deformation, an angle of twist, for a given material that's uh, defined by G, a given shaft size, which is defined by L and J, uh, and a given torque T. Now, if we look at those two equations, you can see that these are very similar, right? The length of uh, the rod is the same. Torque here uh, replaces the axial force. Um, I've kind of moved these. Uh, yeah, right. And uh, J, our second moment of area, moment polar moment of inertia, replaces the area. So that's about cross-sectional area. And then G, which is our material modulus of elasticity, uh, is again replacing the um, normal modulus of elasticity.
So the fact that we see such similar equations suggests that we're going to solve them in the same way, uh, and, and we are. Um, one trick here is we have to make sure we keep our, um, our signs straight, and so we'll use our uh, right-hand rule here. Uh, which is just like the right-hand rule that we used uh, when we talked about magnetism or when we talk about uh, angular velocity and torque. Um, and so positive is going to be where your fingers are pointing. Um, when your thumb points along the axis, um, usually away from a support, if there's a support there. We can use superposition to solve these problems. So I can not only, I can add up sections if I have multiple torques along here, I can find the, the angle of twist created in one section and add it to the angle of twist created in a section. I can also do what we did before, right? Which is to say I can, if I have multiple torques here, I can say, well, what kind of angle of twist is gonna be created by this torque, then add it to the angle of twist created by another torque. So superposition works in exactly the same way. Um, and here are some directions real quick about um, using that right-hand rule. You notice our <laughs> little squish guide here does not have any thumbs, so he can't do these problems. He's, uh, <laughs> he's helpless. <laughs> So uh, if we, the last thing, again, I, this is just like doing axial stuff, um, but with a different kind of force. And so we can also solve indeterminate problems. So if uh, this is a statically indeterminate problem, if I twist this in the middle, um, trying to figure out what my internal result moment in here uh, would be impossible because I've only got, uh, uh, I've got, multiple unknowns here. In this case, I know TC, but I don't know TA and TB. Um, so I couldn't solve that. But I can come up with a compatibility equation, which says that, okay, I don't, from A to B, my total angle of twist is zero. Um, and then I can come up with a compatibility equation that looks like this, that, that my angle of twist from A to C minus my angle of twist from C to B is going to be zero. In other words, those have to be equal and opposite um, in order to solve that. And then I can take my equation. This is just like we did with axial stuff. I can take my equation for twist um, and put it in here. Uh, and then I can solve because that's going to give me, I know everything else here. These are material and geometry components. I've got a second equation with TA and TB that I can combine with this equation for TA and TB, and that's going to allow me to solve for this statically indeterminate um, situation. Okay, so ho the, hopefully the, I, the, the, the physics and math of torsion are more complicated than, than what we did with axial stuff. But the solution process, once we, once we have our equations in place, the solution process uh, is, is very, very similar. That's it.